After watching their parents die in a late night attack, brothers Jake and Duncan have gone their separate ways. Jake has gone straight and narrow and sweeps up the local saloon, saving his money for a rainy day. Duncan has founded the Dalton Gang and spends his money on women, booze, and gambling. When the two meet at the saloon, Jake ends up getting invited to join the gang for one night as a lookout for their next train heist. The heist does not go as planned. Instead, they are left with an injured Duncan and a young woman in a trunk. Everyone who might have been able to tell them why Pearl was in the trunk is dead, and she swears her home is nearby and there is a doctor in that town who can heal Duncan. Ignoring the ominous crowds and unusual location of the town, they head out for help. The town is entirely populated by women. Beautiful, erotic women and Maria is the leader of the mall. The men in the gang quickly fall prey to the siren song of the town, while Jake does his best to resist. Things go sour quickly and the men are left in a standoff with the village's witches. First of all, you can say that this movie is a derivative of From Dusk Till Dawn, but that's not really a problem. The issue here is the lack of inventiveness. It is a mishmash of ideas that are often disjointed. The storytelling is muddled and most of the characters lack character. This is a problem when there is little to garner sympathy for any of the players. It certainly doesn't help that the movie screenplay doesn't know how to portray women as anything more than fakely sinister. Witchcraft does play a role in some last act shenanigans that trap the last surviving members of the gang, but it still takes a backseat to characters extensively monologuing in attempts to retroactively inject pathos and significance into their story. The dialogue is also so long-winded and serves only to break up thinly connected fried gags because those moments don't feel like added depth, but instead a distraction from how cheap and perfunctory the horror elements feel. The framing is so flat and the staging is so static that it feels like the pilot for a TV show that has not found its stylistic voice yet. The editing certainly doesn't help matters. Action-heavy scenes have an unfortunate tendency to lose all sense of geography. The resolution of Jake's and Duncan's arcs is emotionally weighty and serves as a solid bookend to the horrible circumstances that led them to this climax. Unfortunately, that resonance is tempered by overwrought writing that overestimates its own gravitas and the horror set pieces are almost completely uninspired.